Today we're gonna find out if buying a pricey CD transport is worth the money. Something tells me it's not, but let's not jump to conclusions yet. At least not until I do some test and measurements. Firstly, what is a CD transport and what does it do? A CD transport should do one thing and one thing only. Transport digital data from CD to a DAC, nothing less, nothing more. DAC stands for Digital to Analog Converter and is used to translate a digital signal that is coming out of the CD transport to an analog signal. You can either have a standalone CD transport which needs some sort of external DAC or a CD transport can be bundled with a DAC and that's called a CD player. Now the question is, if a CD transport only transports digital data, why don't people use a simple CD-ROM drive in a computer or a cheap Chinese scrap for 5 quid instead of some high-end transport for 5,000 quid? Well, to be brutally honest, I have no idea and that's the reason why I'm making this video. I want to find out if a cheap CD deck or a simple CD or DVD or Blu-ray or whatever's inside my PC rig can do the same thing as an expensive CD transport or any CD transport for the matter. CD transports can get quite expensive and there are a couple of factors that can affect the final price. First, higher quality optics and laser that can last longer and read better some scratched or slightly damaged CDs or even ability to read CDRs or CDRWs. Second, better error correction. If some part of a CD gets too damaged and unreadable, the CD transport will attempt to correct the error to some extent. Third, better damping. If you live for example in Japan and you want to listen to CDs during earthquakes, you need a good damping, so your CD transport can withstand those vibrations and keep reading the disc without interruption. But it's certainly not necessary under normal conditions. Fourth, larger buffer. Every CD transport or CD player has got some sort of buffer where it stores unplayed data. It plays the music from this buffer rather than directly from the CD and there's a pretty good reason for that. If the player encounters some sort of problem such as vibrations, it won't affect the playback unless it keeps misreading large chunks of a CD and the buffer can't keep up. Fifth, the quality of used materials and components. I don't need to explain this one, do I? Sixth, different types of output. Some cheaper CD transports have only optical and coaxial outputs, also called SPDIF. Generally, the more expensive the transport gets, the more types of outputs you can find there. Seventh, better shielding against some external interferences as well as internal. Eighth, a design. Some companies may charge extra for a sleeker look, at least they may think it's sleeker. I'm gonna do a simple test. The setup for this test is my two computers and these two CD players. Firstly, I'm gonna rip a track from a CD using my internal Blu-ray drive in my PC. Then I'm gonna record the same track using one of the CD players connected through an optical cable to my computer, which bypasses the internal deck of the CD player. Why optical cable, you ask? Well, it's a digital transfer and thus bypasses internal player's deck. And since it's optical, it's not prone to electrical interferences. After that, I'm gonna compare the recorded files in a program called Delta Wave and find out if the tracks are different in any way and if there's some audible difference. If the CD transport does what it's supposed to do, which is transporting the original and unchanged data, there's no way it should sound any different compared to an internal CD-ROM or any other CD transport. And now to the test. The CD-ROM in the computer should rip the track perfectly bit by bit. This way I get perfect copy of the track. To make sure it's done properly, I use two different serum drives to rip the track, two different computers, two different operating systems, completely different software to do that, and compare these two files for changes in Delta Wave if there were some differences. Delta Wave compares two sound samples for even slightest differences and spits out some results. What's cracking is the archive and play the difference. It may sound something like this. But in our case, there's nothing to it because there's no difference. Let's have a gander at the result. This one's probably most interesting for me, it shows the difference in frequency response, if there is any. And if there is any, it may look like this. But in our case, both tracks were exactly the same, so there's no difference and we're off to a good start. Then I connected the Sony SCD-1 to my deck, which is supposed to be one of the best CD players there is, recorded the same track and compared those tracks in Delta Wave. As you can see, there's a slight difference in the region around minus 120 dB, which is well below capabilities of human hearing. The music itself hasn't been changed in any way. However, I naturally wanted to know what had caused this difference, so I used the deck to record a nothing slash silence and checked it in Delta Wave. 
Now let's have a look at the graph, and you may see it looks quite similar to the difference between the ripped and the recorded tracks, which means only one thing. These measured differences are some sort of noise made during the recording by my computer, but the music itself is exactly the same without any audible changes. I tried exactly the same procedure with the Yamaha CD player, and the results were, you guessed it right, exactly the same. Audio file bollocks like I've heard better bass or it's got better sound stage and micro details are exactly there, bollocks. The transport is just sending ones and zeros to a deck, which then converts the stream of bits to an analog sound which people can hear. Sure, some data can get lost during the playback for various reasons. Optical cable being too long, coaxial cable getting too much interference, CD being dirty, etc. But the CDs have got some level of error correction, so it helps a lot. And if more data is lost than is able to correct, it won't degrade audio quality progressively and either you will notice subtle changes. It works pretty much the same way as a digital tele. If some data get lost, it doesn't magically lower the screen resolution. It just corrupts parts of the screen which correspond to the missing data from the stream. As for the digital audio, you won't just hear less bass or worse stereo separation or something like that, it will be just nonsense the deck made up based on the broken stream, usually pops, clicks and similar sounds. Or in the best case scenario, it's gonna be silent. However high the price can be, the only justification for that is build quality. Whether it costs 5 quid or 5 million quid, whether it's a CD transport or a simple CD-ROM drive in your laptop, it still produces the same stream of bits and there's absolutely no audible difference between them. Unless it's doing something it's not supposed to do. What makes the difference though is a DAG the transport is connected to. So if you want to improve performance of your audio system, do it by getting better DAG. Expensive transport's not gonna cut it. Don't waste your money on something that's primarily made for just spinning CDs. Literally nobody needs a CD transport for £5,000 or even £500 unless you don't care about the money and you just fancy the most expensive thing there is. Selling this stuff for that kind of money is a scam and a rip-off. Some people even suggest that changing a clamp or a weight changes the sound quality and that's of course complete bollocks. Don't fall for this shit and get whatever is cheapest or whatever you fancy, it doesn't matter. And that's it for today, go listen to some CD and don't buy any expensive rubbish, cheers.